Hello, Lisa Johnson here, just coming to you with a quick Q&A because I can see that lots of you today have had some mindset wobbles um, and that's normal. You know, you're trying something new here, you're thinking, can I actually do this? That's always going to give you a, a little bit of a wobble. You might also during this week get frustrated when you're trying to do something or push past something. Um, that can also give you a wobble and you might also start um, giving yourself a few stories or limited beliefs in what you can do, what you can't do and why you can or can't. And jumping ahead, we're seeing a lot of that as well. So I wanted to come on and give you a bit of a Q&A in case you've got questions that you just want to ask in here so I can do some quick fire answering for you before day three of the challenge, which is tomorrow. Um, hey Deep, oh good, I can see that you're writing things now, so it's working. Yeah. Brilliant. This is Finian. Hello. Um, for anybody that watched the launch party on Sunday night, you met Albert. Uh, this is Albert's twin brother. Hey. They don't really look the same. Yeah. I don't come on much, it's usually Albert. It's usually Albert, isn't it? You're yeah. a bit more introvert than Albert when it comes to cameras. Yeah. But yeah, so you can ask me anything you want. Hey Zoe, hi Heather, nice to see you. Um, you can ask me anything you want about what we're doing this week or about my business. Um, you can ask Finian anything you want <laughs> about family life. Hi Sophie. <laughs> It brings up so much for people because the desire for a different way is so real. I think it does. And I think that you've got to always remember, um, we're usually on a path that we've been put on. And as soon as we start veering off that path to do something a bit different, our subconscious mind is going to try and bring us back in because we're made as humans to be safe and to stay on a status quo path. And so as soon as we do something different, which entrepreneurs have to do, they always have to come off the path then what's going to happen is you're going to get pulled back in by little things in your head saying things like, you know, oh, you best not do this. This is going to be too hard for you. This isn't something that's right for you. This is for other people. And we have to ignore that because as entrepreneurs, we have to be off the beaten track. We can't stay safe because safe is a nine to five and we don't want that. We've already decided that, haven't we? Um, it's morning here in New Zealand. I need to make breakfast. It's so weird that it's morning there. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem right. It's, it's weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, and it's um, late summer there. And we're just going oh, into spring. It. Yeah, because we were talking about at school how um, their winter is our summer. And yeah, it's, like it's crazy. Yeah. So any questions, let me know. This is my second race to recurring revenue. And it's only just clicking into place for me. Yeah, sometimes... People always say to me, people have told me this all the time, and now it's clicking in when you've said it. And that's usually because we have to hear something several times and in different ways before we realise what we actually want and what we need to do. Um, and I always think, I kind of live by this rule of, we have 4,000 weeks on average in our lifetime. 4,000 weeks. That's not that much. Mm. And so... If you're always going to think one day I'm going to do this or one day I'll be in the right mindset or one day I'll be in the right place in my life to be able to go for what I really want to and have the business I really want to, just, you know, those weeks are going past, those 4,000 weeks are going past as you're saying that to yourself. So, you know, if we've got 4,000 weeks, what number week are we on right now? You know, what are we going to do with that week to make sure... It's not just another week that disappears. And I live my life that way, which is why we're always doing so many things. Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, why we're always doing so many different things. And I'm always trying to experiment with the business and, you know, try things that might not work and fail. Like, I fail at things all the time and it's okay to fail. Because if we don't fail, we don't learn. If we do nothing... We might not fail, but we'll never move forward. And so it's okay to try things. They don't work and get back up. Heather, can you focus on more than one type of business at once? I come from serial entrepreneurs and I'm one as well. Um, just talk for stability. Just left. You can. I always think with the passive income side, one of the best things to do is take one income stream, put it into place step by step, do it, make the money from it. And then start again with another one once it's starting. And that's kind of what I've done in business. I was telling them about your business the other day. 
You're an Albert's right. business. It's the book the reading book adventure one. club. Yeah. yeah, we should do that more. Well, I asked Albert, mm. why do you think it failed? Yeah. And he, what do you think he would have said to that? We didn't put much effort into That's it. That's exactly what he said. You didn't put much effort in. And, and mm. I think you know that as well. And with business, it's always about consistency. You can't just do a bit and then stop. Um, I'm keen to find out if I can form a membership for expats relocating to the UK and incorporate affiliate marketing with different suppliers from the industry that helps. That's a brilliant idea. Yes, you can definitely do that. So you can start that membership. The first thing you want to do is grow the audience of people that need that then start the membership and then use affiliate links for different things, you know, in the UK that people might need and sell that with your affiliate link. It's a great idea. Yeah, it's not failing, it's learning. Exactly that. Even in Amanda. I need to get more comfortable with failing. Failing forwards. Um, I think one of the biggest things is failing fast. I think we're all going to fail at things. You know, the fir first time you launch something, you might not make money from it. You might need to tweak it a little bit for next time. You might make mistakes as you go along. But if you do things quickly, rather than thinking about them for three years and then doing it, what will happen is you'll fail fast. And it's much better to fail fast than to put three years into something and then fail. <laughs> so I do things quickly, I fail fast, I move on to the next thing. And I always think that's the best way of doing it. Hey, Anne. Uh, I was a training and development manager and used to teach food hygiene. So I was thinking of doing some videos on food hygiene too. Yeah, these are all great. Your ideas are great. It's okay, don't worry that you're late. So what questions have you got? And we're going to do a proper open Q&A. You can ask me about anything. My business in the last five years. You know, anything you've been wanting to ask, you will know by now. I'm pretty transparent. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm really transparent. I'm really honest. And I'll tell you the truth about everything. Um, you can ask Finn anything <laughs> about home life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really transparent. We just want to help you to get where you need to go. I have so many questions. Good. Should I be investing money into paid site hosting and funnels when I have zero clients versus free Google site, free funnel site? I wouldn't be putting money into anything other than learning. So with me, I didn't really, I put money into learning. So I did things like courses. I had a coach for a bit. I bought books on different subjects, but I didn't put money into funnels or anything like that until I started making money. Not even ads. Didn't do anything like that. Um, what does membership mean? How does it work? There's loads of different ways to have a membership. So you could have a membership. I have a membership called You Can Sit With Us, and it's for people who are in business for the first couple of years. And it's basically a container which I hold on a Facebook group where people are there asking each other questions, cheerleading each other along, and then I bring in a guest every month. We also have things like <coughs> networking sessions on there, implementation sessions. I come in and do lives once a month and trainings. So it's just like memberships are normally lower cost. So mine's £49 a month and they are something where it's more about being in the environment with other people there are some that are just based on learning but most of it's about community but there's lots of different types of memberships you know you can have a membership just for learning how to play the guitar for instance you're in a membership aren't you that um nikki collinson phoenix has just put together you know Lani's oh mom. yeah the um she's almost like an online scout for kids who are doing homeschooling or world school or anything like that yeah so people that are traveling she's made a membership for kids that are traveling to still be part of a kind of a youth club but online um so yeah there's so many different things you can do <laughs> The reason that Victoria is saying Finn remember money is because at my book signings, Finian and Albert were working with me at the book signings and they were just helping people. Also, were, we got to sign a few books. You got to sign a few books and they were helping like um, get people drinks and all different things. And so Victoria went up to them and told them that they needed to double their fee. And so then I got charged quite a lot of money by Finian and Albert for working. So thanks for that, Victoria. <laughs> uh, 
I'm an HR consultant and I'm still struggling with a solid idea that people would buy from me. I love working with SMEs, helping them take on their first employees. Can this really be a thing? Yeah, it's really a thing. I have many, many HR and legal professionals that now make, you know, thousands and thousands, one or two of them, hundreds of thousands per month um, in doing HR, legal things for small businesses, courses mainly, but also templates work really well for contracts and things like that. If you're trying to push a product rather than a course, how do you funnel? So when we're talking about the passive income side of things, if you're talking about the product itself, what you'll mainly be doing is looking at things like subscription boxes. But what I'd like you to think of if you have a product is how you can add value to that product by doing a course that goes with it or a membership that goes with that product, whatever that product is, because then you can make a lot more money a lot quicker with it and it will sell the product for you. Finn, where is your favourite place to visit on holiday? I love your travels. Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, well, I particularly like hot places where you can just sunbathe. I'm a proper water baby. I'm obsessed with sea, pool, anything like that. So definitely somewhere hot, like Barbados or one of those little islands. Yeah, it was good in Barbados, wasn't yeah, it? it was. It was good there. What did you think about... We went to the Maldives. Oh, that, that was last Christmas. the best holiday I've ever had so far. Is that apart from Butlins? Yeah, apart from Butlins, <laughs> obviously. He loves Butlins. It's so good there. Um, I have your book ready to read on my flight to Australia this weekend. Oh, cool. Uh, hi, Lisa. Would this process work if you didn't want to create a course or membership? As one of my options is to create and sell pod merch and digital downloads. Yes, so digital downloads is the same. So think of digital downloads like templates um, or a bit like PDF workbooks and that kind of thing. So yeah, it can definitely work. The whole process is the same, whatever you're selling. And if I'm completely honest about it, although we talk about passive income a lot, the process is actually the same for any online business, even if you were just going to do one-to-one. -one. The process is the same. You still need to grow an audience to sell your thing. So you would be doing the same thing. Is it possible to start ch charging for advice you've been giving out for free for ages? Yes, you just shouldn't have given it out for free for ages. But yes, you absolutely can. So I've got the audience in a Facebook group. Now, what can I do next to monetize this? So as long as you have nurtured that Facebook group, it's time to start putting out something. It's time to do the launching part of it. And we'll talk about launching on day four, so don't worry too much about that yet. But there's a load of things you can do to monetize an audience if you have an engaged audience. You can have a million people in an audience, and if they're not engaged and you're not nurturing them, it won't make a difference. I love our community too, Victoria. Uh, Finn, you both did a lot of work. Yeah, yeah you did. You did. Uh, Very worth it. Did you enjoy the book launch? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it also, we got to go to a load of cities that we'd never been to. That's true. We went on this book tour and we went to Birmingham. We went to Manchester. Manchester. Newcastle. Scotland. Ed yeah, Edinburgh. It was really good. My background is nursing. However, I'm interested in coaching for health and well-being. Also, I've done a hypnosis course and would like to use both of these. Yeah, I would definitely combine all of those things together because that gives you credibility. There's a lot of things there that will help people in different ways. You might need to think a little bit about what your niche is going to be. So it might be that you're helping certain people or people with certain problems or entrepreneurs who are busy and stressed out, you know, work on that niche. But um, yeah, you could definitely work well there. Hello. Uh, sorry, look. Yeah. Uh, memberships. What do you do with people who don't renew the membership? Do they stay in the group? No, no, they leave the group. How can you check who renews it? So we have a membership that's every month and it goes on Stripe. And if, let's say, someone doesn't pay, so it doesn't renew, then we get, they automatically get taken out of Kartra so they can't see the back end and all the trainings and things that we have. And it sends us a message and we then know to take them out of the Facebook group. It's as simple as that. It's, these things are really easy once you start using the automated systems that do this stuff for you. 
I'm a school senior leader and still trying to find something I can sell to others. There's so many things you can do if you work in a school. There's so many things. Well, leadership, for a start, is something that lots of people need. Um, but you know, you have so much knowledge, so start breaking that knowledge down. I'm a therapist struggling to think how to sell something which would normally be very much live, interactive, relational. So there's hundreds of therapists that I've already helped. Um, and it depends which area you want to specialise in. So with therapy, you will know that you have quite a lot of the same issues come to you all the time. And you probably know strategies to help people with those issues. Um, so for instance, Albert went to a therapist because he has anxiety. So there were things that he was taught to do that help him with coping strategies for anxiety that you could teach lots of people at the same time. You look tired, Finn. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed after this. I'm knackered. So a bit concerned that for some unknown reason I'm banned from Facebook ads. We did that. We got banned for a while. I honestly have no idea why. And I've tried to reach out to fa Facebook, but it'd be easier to go for a beer with Zuckerberg than get an answer why. No, you're not. So all you need to do to start Facebook ads is start a new account. It is as simple as that. We had to do it as well. We got banned. We started a new account, started again. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty similar as I understand it. You give your audience value that relates to your product or the... Yes, yes, this is right. Is it a bad idea to go for something niche? I was thinking of courses and resources around coping with migraine. No, the more niche, the better. So I have a friend whose um, membership is for kids with speech impediments, but it's a particular type of speech impediment. And because it's so niche, everyone just goes to her who has that. Like, the more niche you can get, the better. My kids love butlins. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely love swimming and snorkeling in the sun. I'm not 100% sure who my ideal client is. I think they're medium to large lifestyle designers and brands. I think my freebie would be something like six steps to an ethical supply chain, but I'm not confident this is something they would be looking for. Sometimes you have to give people what they think they want but actually give them what they need. So sell what they want, give what they need. So what actually do, uh, do they want? They probably aren't looking for, are they sitting there going, I wish we could be more ethical? If they are, then that's great. If they're thinking, I wish we could make more money and you can sell them, well, actually, here's how having an ethical supply chain is gonna help you make more money, then you'll be able to give them what they actually need. Sometimes you have to do that. Thanks. What do you use for resources hosted and downloads with sales emails lists? So we change, we've changed quite a lot. We were using Kartra, we're still using Kartra at the moment, but we're going to be moving to something else soon because Kartra isn't, there's different ones that are good for the different, you know, Kartra was fine up to about a million, but past that, you need to start looking for something else. But um, there's lots of different, different kinds of, um, systems that you can use dependent on how big your business is and what you want that email list to grow to. Are these passive, semi-passive income streams what have enabled you and your family to go on these amazing travels? Yeah. So we go to, how many countries would you say we go to a year? 10? Yeah, Maybe 10, 10 to 15 countries a year. Yeah. Um, I've been to 17 now. Yeah, yeah 20, 20. 20 you've 20. been to in, in your little life. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's what we love to do. So we knew when we started to make money out of passive income, 90% of everything I do is passive or semi-passive. And that's because I want to spend time with these. Like, I don't want a business that keeps me working from 6 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. What would be the point of that? I want to travel and work while I travel and, and that kind of thing. And so for me, it was really important to know what we were going to do with it. And we travel a lot with it. And there's other things that we wanted to spend the money on. You know, we wanted a forever home, which we're moving into on Thursday. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is a, a house that I visualized like five years ago, like this would be the perfect house. And it's taken this long to be able to, you know, save up for what we wanted um, and get into a position where we can have it. So always have in your head, this is why I asked you in the group, what would you spend the money on? Because you need to know where the money is going. Because sometimes, 
Entrepreneurship gets hard. And if you don't know what you're spending that money on, you're going to give up way too quickly because you need to see it and go for it. If you had £10,000, what would you spend it on? Invest it. Would you? Yeah, easily. I'll, I'll probably invest maybe about 5000 of it and then keep the other 5000 just for... Fun things. Yeah. Like Whatever. what? Anything that comes to mind. Lego. <laughs> mm, Lego. What would you invest yeah. in? Probably some, maybe Bitcoin or something like that. Something that, like stocks, probably. Fair. Uh, I loved reading your book. This is why I'm here now. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Love your journey. So inspiring. I'm an accountant. I help entrepreneurs maximize their profits and enjoy great work-life balance. I'm feeling a bit stuck in the rut of what I can offer. <gasps> so many things. It's like it's been done before. So it doesn't matter if it's been done before. Everything has been done before. The way you do it is what matters. So please don't think, well, I can't do that. It's been done. Everything has. And if it hasn't, worry. There's a reason. Invest in Lego. Very true. Where's that? <laughs> oh, someone has just come up. If you started again, what's the first thing you would sell? Whatever knowledge I had. So if I started again now... I'd probably sell something about bringing up twins. I'd probably do a membership for multiples. Um, I would I would still probably start with a business basics course. I might do something about property because I've learned a little bit about that. So I'll just think about what I know and turn it into turn it into things <laughs> that, I, that, is, that is knowledge. Knowledge is money. My husband just glared at me about the giving information for free part. Your husband is right. You shouldn't be giving it for free. Completely new to this. I saw you in Manchester. You yeah. did. You met Sarah in Manchester. Um, tips on how you can make your audience more active, engaged. If they're silent, you've got to remember with an audience. So I'll give you a little hint here. Where do you think people are when they're looking at their Facebook group? Where do you think they mostly are? Where do you think they are? Hmm? If someone's looking at their Facebook group on their phone, yeah. or when you're looking at your phone, yeah. where are you? TikTok, probably. No, as in, oh, like where, where are you? Like physically. Yeah. In my room. So you could be in your room. Um, out in like a restaurant or a pub or. So guess where most people are when they look at their phone. Uh, transport. The what? toilet. Really. They're Actually, in yeah, the toilet. The toilet no one is on the toilet going, yeah. I really want to learn something new. And yet that's what we're trying to do in Facebook groups. Value, value, value. Make it social. Make it fun. Ask them questions about themselves. Social things. Not everything in there has to be about business or value or the thing that you do. Get them talking to each other. People go into a group, into an audience to be part of a community and yet, they only normally hear from you. <laughs> so you want to get them talking to each other. And you do that by asking questions. Hey, Ange. Um, I think I'm going to head up now. All right. We'll see you later. See you later. Bye, everyone. I'll come up and say goodnight in a bit. Yeah. Bye. How can I increase my visibility on Facebook? Because I don't seem to get coverage. It's about consistency. So if you're going to do something, let's say you're going to go live once a week. Go live once a week. Don't go live once a week for three weeks and then stop for two months because that just drops again. And Facebook especially turns off people's notifications so they don't see it. It's why we didn't let you guys into the group until the night before. If we'd have let you in a week before, all of your notifications would have been turned off by now. So, or at least turned on to limited, which we didn't want. Uh, I learned a lot about nurturing when I first started. Yeah, it makes a huge amount of difference. I'm struggling with the theatre ticket idea. At the moment, I provide coach travel, so sell as a package. I'm not sure what you mean. Theatre ticket idea. So what could you give as, a, as your knowledge to other people with what you know is how you need to be thinking about this? Don't think you have to do it about the thing you do now. 
Whatever your business is now, your passive income stream doesn't have to connect to it. It can if you want it to, but it doesn't have to. I'm a social media manager and thinking of offering a done for you content launch package. There's a disco going on in my living room. My lights are like, um, maybe customizable templates. So it would kind of be passive. Yeah, that works really well. Lots of people do that and it works. I'm just going to turn this light up a bit because I don't know what's going on. There we go. It stopped flashing at me. Uh, you are visiting my school in July. Feel free to bring the twins. You have to remind me about that. I have no idea what's in my diary these days. Yeah, new ads account, Zoe's saying, not a new profile, a new ads account for the person that was saying about her Facebook ads. Can you get too niche? No. The answer is always no to can I be too niche? Do I use my knowledge of running a dental practice or do I concentrate on my art business? Okay, here's the answer to that question. The answer is always, what do you... I feel like there's a ghost in here. It started really flashing. What do you love the most? Because profit follows passion. Always. Because you're more enthusiastic about it. So which one are you excited about? When's your next holiday, Finn? He would tell you that his next holiday is with his dad to Ireland in a week's time. His dad is Irish, so it often takes them back to see their grandparents. I did one to many, launched last year, my super school ready course, got 75 people on my masterclass, 18 purchased, amazing. So do I do the same and focus on getting more in my funnel this year? No, don't change anything. That's a brilliant, brilliant conversion rate, Sue. So I want you to do exactly the same thing, but more people in the masterclass, because you now know your conversion rate is 18 to 75. So double those numbers, you'll double the amount of people that buy, because you know it's worked already, and you know your own conversion rate now. And that's what we want to learn when we launch our conversion rate, which I'll talk to you all about on Thursday. And I know you know already, because you've done one too many. I have mostly specialised in working as a music therapist with people who were hospitalised. So don't think that client group could be my client base here. Yeah, transfer the knowledge and skills. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Sell what people want, give what they need, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm breaking things. Hold on. I want to help holistic therapists who come to this business later in life or as a result of piloting their career. No, that's not too narrow go narrower. How much of a problem is it if you have zero idea of the tech side of things or any business knowledge for that matter, like zero? Yeah, so no one understands any of that at the beginning. I certainly didn't five years ago. You can learn it. Or if you come into one to many we do that bit for you. So you'll be fine. And hosting platforms, we teach you about that in one to many but basically, just play with them all. They're all really user-friendly these days. They're not difficult to learn how to do. And YouTube has so much out there on each different platform. So don't let it scare you. Um, Lisa has x-ray vision for your business and ideas to make it work. I do seem to have my, my only talent in life is to look at where someone is, look at where they want to be, and be able to tell people the steps to get there. And it works. Generally, I can say, do this, 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 and this, and you will make this much money. And that generally has worked for me in the last five years, um, if people do exactly what I say, which is why One to Many came about, because I just wanted people to just do the work, <laughs> just do the process, and you'll get there. And they do. And I love it, because people get shocked. So we'll be in One to Many, and someone will go, I've just done this, this and this, and I've made 30,000. And I'll go, well, that's what you said you wanted to make. And they're shocked that it's worked. And I'm like, why have you even come into one to many if you didn't believe it was going to work? But it does, if you follow the steps. And always remember, you need patience. Not everything is going to be really quick. And I think in this online world, we've been taught to believe it will be. And it won't be. It takes time. And so you have to be resilient. How do you keep positive and motivation? I'm not always positive. <laughs> like, 
this week was a really good example of that. You know, I'm moving house, I'm doing this launch, and then uh, I need, suddenly I needed emergency dental work. And I was like, oh, why does this happen? Like, when I'm busy, why well, can't it have waited two weeks? And so I wasn't positive. I had a right strop, threw my toys out of the pram, um, stormed about for a couple of hours and then just got on with things like we have to because life is always going to get in the way. If you wait for life to be perfect, none of us are ever going to make any money. Like you have to carry on even when things are tough around you. Like last year was such a tough year. My best friend died. Sam got, my husband got cancer. Like so many things happened and people said to me all the time, how are you still carrying on? Because if we continue to just say when things are perfect, I will do this, we will never do them. We get one chance at life, one chance, and we have to make the most of it. We can't waste it thinking that one day we'd like to have the life we really want to. We've got to go and get it now. And nobody's gonna come and save you. No one's going to. So you need to go and get your seat at the table. You need to go and decide that it's your time because no one's gonna tell you it's your time. You make it sound so easy. It's not easy. But it's doable. Everything is doable. Um, so you just listed a bunch of different ideas you'd do. Do you have different sites for each idea? Yeah, and a different audience, um, depending on what I do. So for instance, I am part owner in a publishing company, different audience. I am doing a course with somebody who is a TV presenter we're going to need part of our audience and a bit of different audience. So yeah, often you're going to need a different audience, depending on if your ideal client is different. That's why I try and do things that the ideal client I've got now, which is you guys, I try and do things that generally will fit the same audience so I don't have to grow new audiences all the time. Uh... Oh, thanks, Kirsty. My business is crafting, stamping, greetings, cards, and scrapbooking. I want to run a colouring course using the products I sell. Um, many SU demos do colouring classes, and a couple have created a course. I want to create a course colouring with alcohol pens using simple techniques for the beginners. Great, do it. Is this live going to be available on replay? Such a terrible multitasker. Yeah, I'll just leave it in here. I'll probably do a couple of lives throughout the next couple of weeks. I am a wire artist. Yeah, workshops is exactly where you need to be headed. Masterclasses. My idea is a sleep coach, but aimed towards professionals, maybe approaching gyms, businesses. Great. So um, do you follow Hannah Love? So Hannah Love is one of my clients. Uh, she came to me as somebody that wanted to specialise in baby sleep coaching, parenting, and she's done amazingly well with that. So yeah, that I think is a really good idea. Uh, there are two different niches that I want to do something with. Even though they're different, they can be combined. Yeah, so you can start one and then the other, or if you can combine them, like we talked about earlier with like hypnotherapy plus wellness, I mean, combine them, they make loads of sense. So if they can be combined, then do. Profit follows passion. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't clear. I want to start a membership to sell reduced theatre tickets only. At the moment I sell as a package, am I allowed to just sell tickets that are reduced or would that make me a tout? I don't know, but I know who will know. You need to ask that question to Lauren Prentice, um, who I'll be interviewing in the next week. So you can connect with her and ask her that question. She will know. I'm not looking to do a membership or anything like that because I don't want to, that's fine. I'm thinking more of a book or downloadable resources. What's the base? You launch them in exactly the same way. You would still have to do the funnel. Um, and you still have to launch and I will teach you about launching. I'm looking to run curriculum themed book boxes. Can't decide if you advertise it direct with schools or aim at parents or both because then you get more money. Today's task, do I need to create three different ones? No, you can just pick one from yesterday and do the one. How long would you build a group for before you open the doors to, so to speak in a Facebook group, freebie and funnel set up, just continue to build and build? No, there has to come a point where you give it a go. 
So if you know that that group is engaged, it's time to try and sell something. Now, most people are scared about this. I will talk about this on the launching on day four. They're scared in case not enough people buy or no one buys. I want you to remember something. When you put something out there for the first or second time and no one buys, no one knows that no one bought. That happens all the time. But you have to put it out there eventually because you need to know if A, it's viable and it's gonna work, and B, what you need to tweak. Like, Because if it doesn't work and people don't come in, you need to look at your funnel and see what's going wrong. It's a process of looking at your metrics and going, okay, they looked at that, they came into the challenge, they did this, but they didn't buy. So is it the sales page? It's kind of just about looking at what's there and what part of it you need to tweak to make it work the next time, which is why there's never really failure when you do things like this. Uh, could you approve? No, that's not to me, that's to someone on here, which is great. I think I would like to run an idea of arts creative sessions with the young children, but struggling to have to be passive. Wondered about doing the sessions with my own kids and using those videos to guide other people. You could do that, but you can do it at the same time. You could do it live and then record it. So have the children on the other end kind of thing and you showing them. But it definitely can be passive. I want to help women that are aging out of corporate world to start their own business. The business is network marketing. I'm also a bariatric patient and can give tips. And the two can be combined. I would do those two separately. They're two different. Choose one, do that well, go back and do the other. Should you only use a Facebook group if doing a launch? No, you can have a Facebook group. Just, I've got a Facebook group called That Strategy Group that's just always there. Um, this is just a pop-up group for this launch. I want to niche as a curly hair specialist and sell courses. Yeah, so you'd probably be better doing yours on Instagram. Um, you don't have to do Facebook. There's lots of different ways. In one to many, we now do Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, I think we're going to do TikTok this year. So there's different ways of growing your audiences, but what you should always do is have an email list. Any tips for selling digital products to corporates? It's very different to corporates. So here's who I want you to go and follow. Uh, you do the same thing basically, but there's a whole bid process. So the person I want you to follow is called Carol Devaney and she teaches getting into corporates and she's one of my clients and she came to me uh, she's been working corporate forever, like as in her business sells to corporates. And we looked at what she could do and we realized that she knows how to sell to corporates. So she now has a thriving business with courses on how to get into corporate, which will help you. So yeah, go check that out. Um, want to do something to help people develop their spirituality in their everyday life, but how do I find these people? They could be anybody. You, you become the lighthouse. So you're not going to go to all those places. You're going to be the lighthouse and start putting out content that is perfect for those people, like the freebie that we talked about. They will come to you and come to your world and come onto your email list and follow the things you're doing um, because you're the lighthouse, not the person that goes out there. I want to create a course to teach parents how to settle their newborn so they sleep well. Again, Hannah Love did that brilliantly. Go check her out. Um, ebooks I want to do one I'm doing one how much do you charge it's about 30 pages I can't tell you how much to charge it's so different the best thing I can tell you on pricing is to go and look at what other people have charged and then benchmark yourself so go okay that's the cheapest one I can find that's the most expensive one I can find do I want to be budget mid-tier or am I positioning my business as luxury and expensive and then charge accordingly because you will get the people that you will attract in will be very different depending on what you charge. Um, we get a great discount only tickets from all major group booking theatres teams. I'm just confused about how you can sell a reduced group. So yeah, you can definitely do it because that's exactly what Lauren does. Um, but I don't know exactly how she does. I don't know the intricacies of selling theatre tickets. Uh, I refinish vintage furniture but I want to venture into teaching monetizing a Facebook group but conscious that I should keep it separate to my main business I don't want to muddy the luxury furniture brand actually can help your luxury furniture brand 
So what we've found is people that teach something while doing something, it puts them quite higher up in the hierarchy of people doing it. So you might, you might want to muddy the waters a little bit, or at least have a link to each of your different things to each other so that people can see that. Um, but you know, when you're attracting different audiences in, they don't have to mix if you have two completely separate email lists and two different Instagrams. I used to be a textiles teacher. Now I want to teach crafters, quilters, knitters how to dye their own materials. I've signed up for craft fairs, but how else can I reach them? Funnel, exactly the same as I'm teaching. You get a funnel, you bring them to you. That's, why we're t that's exactly what we're teaching this week, what you've just asked. I want to create a course to help businesses find their brand, but I'm struggling with giving away too much in a lead magnet. You can't give away too much because eventually people are going to come on that course for the support, for the knowledge, for you, for the step-by-step, -step, for the accountability. They're not just going to come on for a few tips that you can put in a PDF. Like that's just an intro. You could never give enough in a PDF or even in an ebook. I wrote a whole book on what I'm teaching you now. That book on its own, people won't follow it. They need me to be there saying, today do this, next week do this. Um, otherwise they won't do it. They'll put the book on the shelf after they've read it. Uh, how do you physically put it online to create revenue? Put what online? Uh, I've been teaching language online, but I'm in a poor or small town and need help with teaching more clients. I've been doing word of mouth, but I really need it to take off more. I was thinking pre-recording, then people buy the lesson. Yeah, that can work. I need help getting clients and I guess getting a funnel and a landing page to make it work. Yeah. So if you come into one to many, we do that bit for you. Um, do you think a Facebook group is essential? No. <laughs> you do not have to have a Facebook group. Do you have thoughts about making courses CPD accredited? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. So my course is a CPD accredited because I, you, when you do a course and get it CPD, it wasn't at first, I wanted to have a few thousand people through the courses and then get it CPD accredited. Once I knew how the process worked and the standard that was needed, then my next course that I put out, which is about becoming a strategy, business strategist, I made that CPD accredited right from the beginning because I knew the standard that was needed. But it does mean that you are up to a certain standard, so people do trust it more. Um, great, that doesn't sound like a question. I'm going to skip over anything that's not a question just so we can get through them for you. Um, Going back to what you were saying, do a workshop style session live, then leave access open. But then I don't know how that becomes passive income when mostly the people doing it would be live. No, that's semi-passive. You can record it and do it live. So you can put it out there on a sales page and people can buy it whenever. We'll get to that. Try not to think too far ahead because the questions you're asking are seven months down the line from where you are now. So when you start, you're not looking at actually putting anything out there for a few months. Thinking of guidance for secondary level students to start with. Short videos, ebooks as practical advice. Yeah, great. How do you become that lighthouse? You become the lighthouse with the funnel. So you have to follow the steps of the funnel to be the lighthouse so that people can see you, people can find you. That's what a funnel is for. I'm now wondering if I should do my how to use Etsy as an ebook or a one to many. You could do it as a course. You could do it as a mini course and make quite a lot of money. From, you'll always make more money from a mini course than you will an ebook. Um, can you share how you create a quiz as a lead magnet? Yes. Um, so if, if you come in one to many, we do it for you. If you don't, then there's a really good system called Try Interact. It's a software program and you can use that and it talks you through it. It's easy. It talks you through uh, what questions would you like to ask and those kind of things and then it creates it for you. So Try Interact is the program. How long is the waitlist for one to many? We, we have a waitlist, but the waitlist, the people on the waitlist just get an extra thing. So there's not really a wait list. When it opens, which it will do on Monday for one week only, people come in and then it will close. So if you get in within that week, you'll get in basically. Um, but it doesn't open till Monday. We only open it once a year for one week. That is it. 
Uh, CPD feels like a lot of work. Yeah, it's worth it though. How do we have, we have enough to actually get it out there? I guess you need to keep extending your knowledge too. Yeah, because then you can put more things out there. Also, the strategy system, how to build the course is very scary. It really isn't. It's really easy. We're going to talk about content tomorrow. I have an idea of starting a book club, perhaps sending out a book monthly to subscribers. So that's a subscription box idea, which is great. So it's when we talk about membership, subscription boxes are exactly the same. Uh, how do you start before you're anywhere near the point of putting anything out there? Yeah, you have to. You have to start way before you're at the point of putting anything out there because before you do anything, you're going to be working out your ideal client. Remember the cash system, C for client, A for audience. You're going to be building your audience. You're going to be nurturing that audience. You're going to be getting all your systems ready. You don't put anything out there until right at the end and then you make a lot of money. So when I first started that, it took me exactly six months from my first working out my ideal client to launching six months later and I made a hundred thousand pounds in that first month that the first month of me selling which was the month six uh, for some people that might take eight months in between we're going to teach you how to make money on a more one-to-one -one basis so that you can get money in quicker but for the passive income stuff the courses the memberships things like that if you're starting from complete scratch with no audience you're talking six months to a year down the line. Um, but if you start now, then in six months to a year, you'll be there. Whereas what people do is they go, oh, it's too long. And then a year later, they could have been there and they're still thinking about it. Uh, will you talk a bit more about what too many offers? I will on Monday, yeah. Um, in the masterclass, Monday night, 8 p.m., I'll tell you all about it. I'm thinking too far ahead with how to get my how-to guide freebie out there, as in the background part. Where do our emails go? Um, there's lots of places your emails will go. It, it, it's too big. That bit, everyone always asks me about that bit, which is like how to grow that audience once you've got the funnel. But it would take me three hours to teach you it. Um, but the funnel process starts with the freebie. And then you put it everywhere. And then people come in that way and then you nurture your audience with emails. But that's what one to many, the whole section of that is about that because I can't teach it in the tiny amount I have with you. Uh, my next question would be, how do mini courses work? It can be pre-recorded with Q&A or it could just be pre-recorded or it could just be two half an hour sessions. Like there's no right or wrong with it. I'm an online fitness coach, but my background is marketing. I'd love to use my marketing background to help other PT set up online. Am I right in assuming I'd need a separate brand name, social media? No, you can use the same one. You're already a fitness coach. It will just make you look even better to your clients that you can help other P PTs do that as well. It kind of puts you up in the hierarchy. I will talk to you about one to many on Monday. Uh, struggling to know if I have enough knowledge to be able to create enough of a course. How do you know if that's imposter syndrome or your idea actually isn't watertight enough? You write everything down that you've got. We're going to talk about content tomorrow, so I won't go into it now. Um, can you have a subscription box and live in another country? Yeah, you can. What did you first put out there to make 100,000? Uh, a course called Fabulous Foundations, which I actually gave away a couple of weeks ago for my sixth business birthday. Uh, I sold it for £1,500 um, and I got 100 people in. I actually got 60 people in and I did a few VIPs, which meant they got an extra call with me. If you ha and I only had a small following, 600 people then in a group. If you have a small following, how do you get your product in front of lots of people? Even a funnel, would you pay to promote an offer? Uh, you can. Some people do. I don't. That's not how I teach it. I teach doing it organically. So you start with building connections with clients, audience in a way which is directly working with them. Then later down the line, that becomes passive. Not everyone does. If you want to make money straight away, then yes, you're going to have to directly work with people. But some people would rather wait the, the few months put everything into it and only do passive. And that's fine, especially people that have a nine to five job or they have another business. They're not reliant on this to make money. Uh, I wasn't even going to do this challenge again after doing one too many last year. Tonight, I was waiting for my daughter to swim. I wrote an 11 module course. This happens every year. <laughs> um, as a numbers person, writing content to nurture with emails is painful for me, which has prevented me from doing it. How can you get around that besides outsourcing it? Um, 
do a podcast? Can you talk it instead of writing it? Is that easier for you? Do video? You don't have to do it the same way as everyone else. You do things that fit you. When you're first doing your lead magnet, where did you put your link since you said you were not on social media? I was on social media. I came on and I started a Facebook group straight away and I nurtured that Facebook group and then I did a lead magnet and I put it everywhere. I went and asked different memberships, can I come and teach about this thing that I know in your membership? And the ones that said yes, loads said no. The ones that said yes, at the end of it, I would say I've got this free thing for you and I'd give the link. Or... I would speak on a stage or I would talk in people's groups. I would answer people when they're asking questions in Facebook groups and I would give them my freebie. Like there's hundreds of ways you can do it. When you first, no, don't that one. Same, I did OTM last year. (laughs) Now you're wearing your brain again. What if you got a freebie that you're promoting but only a few from the audience are going for it? Then I would ask your audience what they want and give them it. But actually, You have a freebie to get the audience. If you already have an audience and they're not going for it, you don't really care because they're already in your audience. What you're looking is to get new people. I started a three-day fitness challenge yesterday in anticipation of selling an online fitness course for beginners, but worry I targeted the wrong market and not enough funnels. Any advice? It depends why you think you targeted the wrong market. There's not... I don't know what you mean by not enough funnels. You only need one funnel... So it may, do you mean not enough people are coming in, although you only started it yesterday, so it depends how many you're trying to sell. Um, like if you are looking at selling 10 places on something, you need between 1,000 and 3,000 people generally in your audience. Now that's a really low conversion rate. My conver- that's a 2 to 3% conversion rate. My conversion rate is 14%. So it depends. Um, on your own conversion rate and you might not know it at the beginning so you have to try it just to see it might but anything could be wrong there it might not be the fitness challenge is wrong it might be that your opt-in page to get people in is wrong there's so many parts to it the messaging might be wrong you might not have an audience that's big enough to get people in there so many things it could be I have an audience on my normal hairdressing pages. It's a good idea to sell on that. I'd create a new page for that. Although, probably some of your clients are there. 50-50. You could do it if you wanted to. Right, I'm going to just do a few more as I think they might go on forever. (laughs) Uh, My audience wouldn't pay a lot for a course. Then get a new audience. It's as simple as that because there's hundreds of people that will. Um, I've paid £75,000 for a course. Uh, There are people that have paid £300,000 to work with somebody and find out their knowledge. Um, There are audiences out there that will pay whatever you want. Do you have to start with your entourage to start to build an audience and then it grows that way? No, you don't need anyone at the beginning. You, You will get them with your funnel. What's the best place to sell your course on? Uh, it depends. There's things like Teachable. Well, I'm going to talk about them tomorrow. I'm not going to... There's Teachable Cartridge. There's so many different um, systems that you can use. Uh, yeah, not enough people. I have 10. Okay, so if you have 10 people, you definitely need more people signing up. How many people were in your audience? That's what I want to know before you started. I'd like to support people who have gone through a similar bereavement to me, but wary of cashing in on people's vulnerable state, if that makes sense. You can't think about it like that. There are people that would prefer to pay for the help they need. There are plenty of free services out there that people can access if they are vulnerable and they need help. But there are people, me being one of them, that would rather pay for a different level of service. You can impact a lot of people, help people, and make lots of money at the same time. It's not exclusive. It's not an and or situation. I have real trouble with therapists that are like, well, I can't charge for my services because these people need help. You absolutely can. They're not mutually exclusive. Um, Also conscious I would then be offering similar support to that which I benefited. That's okay. As long as you're doing it your way, you're not plagiarizing or copying someone else's stuff. That's fine. Uh, All right. I'm probably going to leave it there. Oh, I think we're near the end anyway, so I may as well carry on. 
If I'm targeting teens, would you recommend Instagram or TikTok or Facebook? Not Facebook, unless the parents are going to pay them Facebook. Um, TikTok and Instagram. The Facebook then feeds into your membership, yes. Uh, my, my lovely friend Natalie tells me this often, I'm going to get my new audience. How do you start to send your funnel without an audience first? The funnel is to get the audience. You don't, if you already have an audience, you don't need a funnel because the whole point of the funnel is funneling people into your world, into your audience. So the way you get it is all those ways I mentioned earlier. <laughs> like there's, there's literally over a hundred different ways. In one to many, we have a, a module on all of the ways. Dawny Beth Baxter is the person that teaches that for us in there. Um, and yeah, she teaches all of that. But there's, there's so many different ways to do it. Cool. All right, I will let you go. I hope that's helped a little bit. Obviously, there are tons of things that I haven't told you because I don't have the time to tell you. That's why I have an entire 12-week course in it because there is a lot of information to give you. But I want to give you the basics, mainly so that you can see that you can do it. You know, you've already worked out your client and, and the things you can sell. You've worked out the freebie, like how you would get people into your world. The next thing I'm going to look at is the content of the course or membership or ebook or masterclass or whatever it is you're going to do tomorrow morning. Um, and then we're going to look at launching. I want you to really work on mindsets more than anything else because your mindset will tell you so many things. It will tell you you can't do it. You don't understand it. There's too much information to learn. So many things. Don't let these stories rule your head. Don't let this be your narrative. You get to decide who you are and where you're going to go. And your past doesn't dictate your future either. All right. I will speak to you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. See you later, guys.